Hi folks, good to be with you folks. Hope everybody's okay. Uh, just getting, uh, just come back from London, Hyde Park. So I'm just going to have a, a drink. What's this? Tropical juice, tropical juice. Mmm, which one should I go for? That's nice. Go for tropical juice. It's good to be with you guys. Love to everybody out there. A beautiful day. Uh, we just had Bible college students round and they're coming round later on. I'll be meeting them later on, so. Hey, buyer, look at that. What a gorgeous day. Let's have a look out there, look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. What a day. Well, well, well. So, so my friends, hope everybody's okay. Uh, I just want to. Uh, share about the London trip. Just getting another drink. I'll be there, don't worry. Come in. It's good to be with you folks. So, Good to be with you. Um, I just want to share about the trip to Hyde Park. Uh, just we got back about set off at one in the morning. Anyhow, I hope everybody's okay. Love to everybody out there. Uh, this is Jason. You can get me on my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. Get me on my Facebook, Twitter. Also, you can get me on Amazon. You Google Amazon. You can see my books. Just Google Amazon. Jason Burns Atheism, Amazon Jason Burns Islam, Amazon Jason Burns, pick a topic and you probably get something of mine that I've written. Christian books as well, The Reformed Pastor, Biblical Leadership, and other uh, topics as well, The Age of Austerity, At the Feet of Jesus, those are spiritual books if you want to read them. Quite a lot of apologetic material, uh, one on gay marriage, uh, my sister, my les my Lesbian Sisters Marriage, um, uh, The Canon of Scripture, uh, quite a few apologetic works like The Logic of God, Under the Radar by Sam Harris. And uh, you go to my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, you can find the link to Jason Burns books, which will have about 15 books and about 15, 20 booklets that you can get. So it's good to be with you. Uh, don't forget... I'm going to be sending over like quite a few thousand books, 5,000 books or more, to Africa. So I need your support with that. Um, I've raised the money to, to get the books, which is, was a thousand pounds, but I now need to raise a thousand three hundred at least, maybe two thousand. It's definitely a thousand three hundred, but it's going to be more because I have more books that are coming. But I need your help to raise the money to go and send the books over to to Ghana uh, for a library there so please pray about that supporting you can go on my patreon account the top of the YouTube channel uh, you can go to GoFundMe you can find that from my Facebook and from Twitter and I think also on my website so please pray about supporting that and, and, and pass the link around on Facebook as well uh, please so I'm just making this video just to 
share with you uh, my, mine and Mike's trip to Hyde Park. We had a really good time getting down there. Uh, we It was really relaxing. Uh, Stagecoach, the coach, was a lot more comfortable than Megabus. We got down there and then we had a nice breakfast in a Turkish restaurant and uh, we had a nice time of prayer and we were relaxed and we went into the park really cooled out really relaxed really refreshed and it paid off through the day me and Mike were debating in in nice ways so that was good I felt like the presence of God was with us and we were really lifting up Christ in a godly way then we had then I had a, a debate with Mohammed Ichab and this is I want to talk about this uh, before I do, Mike had a debate with Shamsi. Look up that debate because I think it will be a really good debate to watch. So find the debate between Shamsi and Mike uh, this week and uh, you'll really enjoy it. Just Google Shamsi and try to find his YouTube channel and you'll see a really lovely debate there. But I debated uh, Mohammed Hijab and I just want to talk about that debate for those who are genuinely interested. In that debate, Bob the Builder came and he joined in that debate. So I wanna go through a few things. Before I do, I wanna recommend this book. In the debate, when I was debating Muhammad Hijab with Bob the Builder, I'd read a chapter of this, I've read this book a, a few times, but before I went down this week, I read this chap I read a chapter from this book. And um, and I just just be one second. And so I read a chapter from this book. And just uh, just sorry about that. I read a chapter from this book. And in this book, um, it's called the. Heresy of Orthodoxy by Michael J. Kruger and Andres J. Kostenberger. Uh, Andres J. Kostenberger, PhD, Trini Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, Professor of New Testament at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. And Michael J. Kruger, PhD, uh, Reform Reformed Theological Seminary. And, and I've recommended this book before, but in this book, he gives, how do we have the canon? How do we get the canon of the New Testament? He quotes 2 Peter 3.16 showing that Paul's letters were seen on par as the word of God. He quotes 1 Timothy 5.18 For the scripture says you shall not muzzle an ox when it reads and out treads out the grain and the labourer deserves his wages and he notes that's a quotation from the Gospel of Luke so in 1 Timothy 5.18 there, there is a, a, a quoting alongside the Old Testament a scripture the Gospel of Luke then he quotes um, that uh, the reading of scripture was seen as important um, so for example after the letter has been read to you see that it is also read in the church of Laodicea 1 Thessalonians 5.21 so we're seeing already a canon is already in existence right at the beginning we also have one Clement who said this uh, in 95, uh, AD 95 in one of his epistles, first to Clement, take up the epistle of the blessed Paul. What did he write to you at first in the beginning of his proclamation of the gospel? To be sure, he sent you a letter in the spirit concerning himself, Cephas and Apollos. So one Clement is saying that Paul's letters should be read, and that's 95 AD. Then you've got the Didache, which quotes Matthew 6, 9, 13. And then you have Ignatius, who says, Paul, who was sanctified and gained a good report, who is right, blessed, and the footsteps may be found, and I shall to attain to God, who is every epistle, makes mention of you in Jesus Christ. 
So Ignatius mentions the importance of reading Paul and Scripture. Polycarp um, quotes the Old Testament and New Testament together. So he says, Thus we can agree with Meta when he declares Polycarp calls Ephesians Scripture. So, so in my debate with uh, Muhammad Hijab, some of the scholarship that I was using was was from this book uh, and from this specific chapter, um, chapter five, interpreting the historical evidence about the canon. Then there's a guy called Thiessen who wrote a book on the Essenes and the Dead Sea Scrolls and then I used his scholarship and talked about that there were communities in the area and uh, Essene communities in the area who were copying scripture, lots of these monk kind of Essene communities around Palestine and that would indicate that the New Testament people of the time would have been looking that they had would be having scripture as well. Then I, I made an argument about covenant of scripture, where there is a covenant, there is scripture, and in the Jeremiah 32, there is a, there is covenant, when covenant given is scripture. So the, the New Testament community would have expected, uh, with the new covenant, a scripture. Uh, then I mentioned the Gnostics, and the Gnostics quoted from the New Testament, which shows that the New Testament was early, and seen as a canon. So that was my basic kind of argument and scholarship. Some of it from this book, some of it from Thiessen, and some of it from my own research. Actually myself reading the Nag Hammani literature, which was it's a lot of Gnostic literature, and making notes myself and finding the quotations of the New Testament, etc. So, so, when I'd finished that argument, it kind of Mohammed Hijab was really impressed with the evidence that I gave him and it kind of like quiet him down then Bob came and there was a debate between Bob and him and I helped a little bit in that debate a couple of pointers in that debate between me and Bob with me and Bob against Mohammed Hijab um, couple of pointers um, I'd already made my argument and I think my argument was watertight that right at the beginning there was already a canon in the first century and I laid down five to six solid historical principles and there are anom anomalies you you there are there were debates about the book of Hebrews, there were debates about 2 Peter, but there weren't debates because there weren't a canon in the first century, there were debates because we didn't have the internet and information didn't spread as fast. And it was because the church had the difficulty of that, that's why they didn't. some parts of the church didn't fully understand what was fully in, in the canon. And that's why there was a long process of over 300 years of debate and discussion. But my, my argument was, was solid in that there was already a functional canon of the New Testament in the first century. And I made a strong case for that. Bob come and he made the case um, that canon is list, is the list. And the list is... Uh, was in, was in Athanasius letter and the moratorium fragment and what Muhammad Hijab was trying to get at it was a historical process of the church choosing the books and then there were books that weren't choose Bob made the argument and has made this a, a, a number of times that it was the church that conferred what was to be the scripture I, at that point I had to make a point to Bob to, to show that there was a slight difference between my argument and his but it was significant because it's in the area of epistemology how we know 
And I said, no, that scripture inherently testifies to itself that it's scripture. The church only identifies what is already scripture. And then Bob uh, said, well, we don't have to be against each other, that they can complement each other, which is fair enough. With that, uh, Muhammad seized on an opportunity where he thought he could create a wedge between me and, and Bob and kept pressing this issue about which, is it the church that confers authority to the scripture. Um, but then we got into a chat concerning the historical historiography, how we know what is history in terms of Islamic teaching. Now, can, can I just finish this and then I... Is that okay? Sorry about that. Then we got into a chat about um, the historiography of Islam and how we get a chain of narration to prove the Quran is, is true and, and Muhammad Hijab gives a long chain of narration. He said that, he had, that in that chain of narration there were documents and he said there was 75 years after Muhammad there was a document that gave the chain of narration. I doubt that very much. If there is a document, I should imagine the copy that we have is, is very, very much, much later. But he de I then asked him a question about the science of Hadith. And I said, is it man-made or, or, or not? He, 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 he struggled to give the answer to that. But the top and bottom of it was is that he admitted that he got the sign they got the sign of hadith, which is how they understand history, from the time of Bukhari. Which means what that means is when they're looking at history, they're using the methodology of the science of hadith, which is their own subjective opinion and the reading back into history what they want. So this chain of narration list is really just an invention that they're reading back into the historical information. And we point, I, uh, Bob spotted that, he pointed it out, and I spotted it and pointed it out, and it was a serious flaw in Muhammad Hijab's argument. And then finally we came to the end of the debate where Bob, uh, where Muhammad Hijab said, do I need the scripture, all the scripture, to believe? Whereupon, um, Bob mentioned Luther. Luther doubted, um, he doubted the book of James, yet he believed uh, in the Lord and he was saved. And Muhammad Hijab said, yeah, well, I, I, I don't believe all this, the, the, the bi things in the Bible, but that means I can be saved. And my, uh, Bob and I corrected him and saying, no, uh, we we believe in we believe in uh, that you have to believe in the death and resurrection of Christ who he is and his death and resurrection then you can be saved with that Bob then went I think pushed it a little bit too much about that we even if we didn't have the scripture we, we still got the message and we can believe and I think we I didn't get an opportunity, but I think we should. It should have been pointed out that the Christian position is: is all the word of God is needed, all the word of God is a unity, and there might be some people that might not have all the four books of the Bible. They can still believe and, and know the Lord, but we need all the books in the Bible. They're absolutely integral, and uh, all scriptures God breathed. It's it's all the word of God is and it's one unity and it has the message of who Christ is and his death and resurrection and we need to believe all of that uh, as orthodoxy and, and, and it's absolutely essential. But can people make mistakes and still but they hold on to the fundamentals of who Christ is, yeah, but that's not the Christian position. The Christian position is the word of God is is fully inspired. This is what should have been emphasized at the end. And that without it, you know, you, you, you will be led astray. You need to, to have that. Um, so if you read um, Westminster Confession on its view of the inspiration of Scripture or, will, uh, or, or, or Grudem's Systematic Theology or Charles Hodge's Systematic Theology 
or um, or B.B. Warfield's articles and letters and, and writings on the authority of Scripture uh, that, that, that will help you. So that's the summary of the debate and um, my take on, on the debate. It was a good debate. I enjoyed it. Um, it was nice to work with Bob. It was nice to, de to, to be on Bob's side and to be working together. And I think that's important as brothers in Christ. And we complemented each other and we helped each other. Um, and Muhammad Hijab engaged m mainly with the arguments. Uh, at the end, it got a little bit argy bargy just at the end. Uh, Muhammad wanted to get a few cheap shots in and uh, finish the debate with, with the bang. So he got a few cheap, cheap shots in, which what, what they tend to do, uh, Islamic Dawah teams, is set up a strong man, knock it down and then go, ha ha, I've won you. And that's what he did at the end, sad to say. But generally, he, he conducted himself in a very amicable way. And we had, I think, we had a very fruitful discussion. And anybody who watches the full debate, I've only got, I, I didn't get all the debate on my camera, but there are people who filmed it and got the full debate. I think if you watch the full debate and you're a Muslim or a Christian or an atheist or someone who's open, you will learn a lot about the canonization of scripture. We talked quite a bit about the Council of Nicaea, Athanasius. I did ask uh, Muhammad Yijab had he read Athanasius. I told him that I'd read Athanasius, Contramundum and other works of Athanasius. So I knew what I was talking about. It was a, So anybody listening to that debate will learn a lot about canonization, uh, historiography, Islamic historiography, etc, uh, etc. Et and I want to thank Bob uh, for coming in. Uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity to, to stand with you for the, with the gospel and to defend the faith. And I want to thank uh, Muhammad Hijab for a very uh, warm and amicable, am amicable debate. And uh, it was a very good, you put up a very good show and uh, I wish we could have gone on longer. I was getting a bit tired, but I wish we could have gone on longer and explored some of these areas in more detail. So, and I want to thank everybody for watching the debate. So that's it really. Um, so this is the book. Please, if you're really interested in the area of canonization of the New Testament, this book, published by Apollos, Michael J. Kruger, it answers Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman's uh, objections to the canonization. Here's what Don Carson says. In the beginning was diversity, and diversity was with God, and diversity was God. Without diversity was nothing made, and that was made. And it came to pass that nasty old orthodox People narrowed down diversity and finally squeezed it out, dismissing it as heresy. But in the fullness of time, which of course our time, diversity rose up and smote off orthodoxy, hip and thigh. Now praise be, the only heresy is orthodoxy. As widely and as unthinkingly accepted as this reconstruction is, it is a historical nonsense. The emperor has no clothes. I am grateful to Andres. Kostenberger and Michael Kruger for patiently, carefully and politely exposing the shameful nakedness for what it is. Don A. Carson, Research Professor of New Testament Trinity Evangelical School. So I just want to say that in my debates and discussions that I've had at High Park, I'm coming from, I, I'm a reformed evangelical okay that's where i'm coming from so people like these guys michael j kruger andres j kostenberger don carson people like that they're my kind of people uh, reformed theological seminary westminster theological seminary southern baptist theological seminary uh monogism website uh, etc this is where i'm coming from 
and that's the source of some of my scholarship that I get when I'm in debates and discussions. So basically, it's classic, classic Protestant reformed defence in, in many areas that I try to do, okay? So thank you for listening and uh, God bless you. Uh, there's so much here that I could go into, but uh, I won't. So thank you for listening. God bless and have a lovely day today. God bless. Thank you.